you wouldn't be a good Chinese or Western CCP shill if you didn't make a video about choo-choo trains in China and how wonderful they are. Just wait a minute, there is a train coming. If you go on YouTube a lot or you follow social media like X and things, you quite often would come across a Westerner in China who shows how wonderful the train system is there. And they do have the most extensive train system in the world, being that it's like the third largest country in the world. And then they would always criticize America, saying that they don't have the infrastructure for trains. Well, here's the point. In America, aeroplane is the way to travel. Now, they don't have very nice aeroplanes like Delta or, I don't know, American, but it gets you to A to B. In, um, in China, they can't have so many aeroplanes because 70% of the airspace is controlled by the military, so only 30%. So even though it's like similar size to America, they had to introduce another mode of transport and basically copied the... Um, Japanese high-speed train network system and also the European one and most of the design and technology doesn't come from China it comes from Siemens like in Germany and a lot of the time they would compare to you could say developing countries like India where it looks like this if you want to board a train in rush hour <laughs> Look, 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 um, social media CCP shills, for example, would actually show you how wonderful the train stations are and inside the trains. In the airport entrance, many people are preparing to go out and 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 go 有经常往返阿姆斯特丹探亲嘅旅客话：，而家出入境好便捷，好很多很多。以前进关的时候。But let's look at the reality. Now, this is not from the usual sources that you would expect to see. But this is someone on their phone in a train station not so long ago during the build-up between the Chinese New Year is absolutely chaotic and very, very unorganized. You could actually say, could the Chinese government organize a party of people getting drunk in a pub. And I think the answer to that would be no. <laughs> So the next video I'm going to show I found not so long ago related to the train system and this beautiful layout of beds, 
and how peaceful it can be on board the train. And it does look very luxurious. I'm not too sure if this is CGI or this is real or this is a prototype, but if I was in China and I wanted to go from Chengdu to Shanghai, it may be an option that you can do it overnight and you can sleep on a very, very comfortable bed going at 350 kilometers an hour. But let me show you the reality of some trains in China going at 350 kilometers an hour with, well, take a look at this. Chinese social media, Chinese influencers, influencers or tourist companies or whatever would try to employ foreigners to come and say how wonderful the train system is. They put it on YouTube, they put it on Twitter, they put it on their social media. So it's sort of, as always in China, is just the positive news. Here is the young girl from the thumbnail of this when she goes on a train, but she's going to go on, on the premium classes. No way is she going to go cattle class. And today I will experience the gaoche for the very first time. Mm, I think it's time for a little bit of stretching. But again, let me just show you the reality of the average citizen who can't afford business or first class to travel because it's just like three times or four times the price of the economy class. The Chinese railway system is actually 900 billion, and I repeat, 900 billion dollars in debt, and it's not making a lot of money, to be really honest. There are some lines which do make a lot of money. Some do make basic, they don't win, they don't lose, but there are quite a few, some long distance ones um, that may be like a thousand kilometers long, for example, which lose money. So why would the government just invest this and just lose 900 billion? Are they going to get their money back? Well, it's a lot of money to get that money back with. Maybe it's just a show off to the world. Maybe they will default on the debt and with the, let's say, the foreign investors who come there, they won't pay them back, etc. But it's a lot. Now, there are stories that um, it's not everywhere, the high-speed train in system in China. It is not everywhere. And even some stories that some of the trains are as old as World War II. All aboard. <laughs> Hold on, please, there is another train coming. So to finish off with today, let me show you a full length one minute video. I hope it will be allowed. If it's not one minute, I will apologize now and it will be about 10 seconds of someone traveling on a high speed train and showing you the glamorous style that you can lead for a inexpensive price compared to uh, train travel in the UK. Remember China is partly a developing country and is part developed already. The salary, the average salary of 1.4 billion people is like $16,000 compared to the country of Taiwan, which is like 56,000. There are people who earn $140 per month. And some people would say that's more than enough to live on in China. Really? In the 21st century? I just find it hard to believe. 
I live in a developing country here in Cambodia, and I would say um, that 140 would be really difficult to live on, really difficult. And that is a poorer country than China. So how come it can be in, you could say, in China? It's just food for thought. I am waffling on. Do like, subscribe and share. And let me show you this ending of this girl on a train somewhere in China and how wonderful and how magnificent it is. But do remember some of the other videos that I have shown you of sometimes the reality. And this is China in the way they just post something which is not 100% true. They're not going to show you the things with goats or overcrowding because it's a negative. They want to convince you that China is the utopia. It's the Shangri-La of the world. Things have changed and things have got a lot better, I would say, and I repeat up to about 2012. But since she took power, it's going back to the Mao era and it's sort of like he's just a power trip, tripping, hungry dictator who will be remembered not for the benefit of his country, but he will be remembered for the person who put COVID to the world. My name is James. Thank you so much for your time. Bye bye for now.